Welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy, the 10-week journey to take the quantum leap to radiance, healing, and your extraordinary life. I'm Lisa Bonis, and I'm really glad to be hosting this Q&A conversation for the Shift Network, where we'll explore the teachings of Lauren Walker and address questions about her upcoming 10-week course, Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy, which begins Wednesday, June 17th. And a little later, I'll explain how you can participate in the course, even if you can't attend the live sessions. But first, I want to introduce our guest. Lauren Walker is the author of Energy Medicine Yoga, Amplify the Healing Power of Your Yoga Practice, and the Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription. Both books won the Nautilus Silver Award for Best Body, Mind, and Spirit Practices Publications. Lauren, who's been teaching yoga and meditation since 1997, created Energy Medicine Yoga while teaching at Norwich University, the oldest private military college in the country. She teaches EM yoga across the U.S. and internationally and has been featured many times in Yoga Journal, Mantra Wellness Magazine, and Yoga Digest. She published a feature article about her work in the New York Times, and she was recently named one of the top 100 most influential yoga teachers in America. And in just a few minutes, we're going to open up for your questions. But first, I want to welcome Laura, Lauren, who's going to begin our time together by leading us in an opening practice. Welcome, Lauren. It's so great to see you again. It's great to see you too and welcome everybody. So let's start as we start every EM yoga practice with the wake up. Tilt up here so you can see me better. Okay, we'll start with the four thumbs. Find your collarbone and drop into the hollows right underneath and start to thumb. And start to breathe in the nose and out the mouth. You can do this standing, you can do this seated, but breathe with me in the nose and out the mouth. You go to the center of your chest over the thymus gland, stimulating your immune system. Breathe in the nose and out the mouth. And then go to the rib cage at the side of the body and Thumping there, right sort of where the bra strap would land and breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Good, shake your hands off. A little bit of a lighter tap now on the cheekbones under the eyes, same breathing pattern in the nose, out the mouth. All of these thumbs getting your energies awake and moving forward and grounding. Shake your hands off. And then just allow the eyes to close and just come into stillness for a moment, tuning into the quiet interior of your own body. From that place of silence, we'll move into the pattern of having your energy cross over the body for optimal learning and integration. You're going to tap the same hand to the same leg, marching in place. You can do this seated in your chair. You don't have to lift your knees up. You can just tap them. Brush your hands off now and cross it over. Now, same hand to the opposite leg. Same breathing pattern. Nice deep breath with me in the nose and out the mouth. Beautiful, shake it off. Bring your hands together over the pubic bone or slightly off the body in the field and close your eyes. Take a moment to set an intention for yourself. And then draw that intention with the inhale through the nose right up the center of the body Exhale, smooth the arms wide around you into the field. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, zip it up. I feel great today. Exhale wide. Inhale again with your affirmation. Exhale. And then let's just lock all that goodness in. Third finger into the belly button, other third finger between the eyebrows. Press in and pull slightly up. Three breaths in the nose and out the mouth. Shake 
know, and just pause for a moment and notice how you feel right now. I want to thank you all for joining today and um, for being part of this. And I'm really looking forward to answering your questions and to leading this course. And I just wanted to take a moment because we are in really unprecedented and uncharted waters in the world right now. And many of us are feeling a lot of uncertainty, a lot of chaos, a lot of fear, a lot of anger, and not really knowing what to do with that. And it may seem odd to be leading a course on coming into joy at such a time where it seems far away for most of us. And what I want to say is that for me, what feels like the most important work to be doing right now is to stay really grounded and to stay really present and to listen. And from that place of grounded presence emerges what is the right thing to do in any moment. Some of us are out protesting, some are writing letters, some are um, listening and, and having difficult conversations. There's many different ways to, uh, to work with what's happening right now. And some people are retreating and that's okay too. It's important to listen and to really pay attention and to be clear. And the path of moving into joy is also the path of moving into healing. And so it is crucial that in this time of such unrest and in this time of, of health challenges for so much of the planet, that we really start to, like the Course says, embody this healing path, embody this joyful path. And that doesn't mean not paying attention and being part of the solution for what's going on in the world. It means even more paying attention and being present so that you can be part of the solution. And for all of us, that's going to be different. But we really need to tune in to understand what it is we need to do next. And the healing path is, I believe, the path that we all need to be on right now. And healing and joy are intimately connected and interrelated. Joy feeds your healing and healing feeds your joy. And so I want to invite you to experience that possibility, the possibility that we can heal together as a community, as a nation, as a world, and move into a place where there is true fairness and equality for every single being on the planet. That if we heal ourselves, we can be part of healing the world. And if we bring joy to ourselves, we can be part of bringing joy to the world. So I just wanted to say that at the outset, because it feels to me a very, uh, a very tenuous time. And we're all seeking and searching for answers. And the yogic teachings are very clear that the answers are within and once we can tune in and listen to those answers, then we know how to bring forth right action in our own lives and in the world. And this course is about repatterning because joy and healing is actually a pattern in the body. And we are looking around us in the world and we see we need desperately to repattern the world. And so if we can learn how to do that, what that means and how we start to do it on our own energy fields in our own lives, then we can be part of teaching that and sharing that and modeling that for the world so that we can learn how to repattern the world again so that it serves everybody. So I just wanted to start this Q&A today with that idea of that repatterning our own nervous systems, our own energy systems for healing and for joy so that we can all be part of the solution. So. Thank you for listening to that. And now I'm going to listen to you and see if I can answer some of your questions. All right. Thank you, Lauren. That was a really beautiful way to start. It really is sort of the ultimate uh, crossover between being the change and that story we always hear about putting your mask on first. It needs to come from within. And if it's not in there, 
you have nothing to offer. So, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, those of you who are watching, we have the rest of our time together to dive into your questions for Lauren as we prepare for her upcoming course. Again, it's called Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy, and it begins Wednesday, June 17th. And if you'd like to check out the website and learn more about the 10-week course, you can visit emyogacourse.com to see the full description. So let's go ahead and get into some Q&A. If you have a question for Lauren, go ahead and type it in. I'll be happy to pass it along. And in the meantime, I've already got a few questions gathered. Uh, so let's start out with a really foundational question here. Uh, this is from uh, Francoise who says, I know about energy medicine, but I've never heard about energy medicine yoga. Could you elaborate about how you've joined these two? Absolutely. That's a great question, Francoise. Thank you for bringing it. Um, so energy medicine is the oldest medicine on the planet. It's how we evolved to where we are today. And there are so many things that we do that we don't even realize are energy medicine, like rubbing your tummy if you have a stomach ache. And then, of course, practices um, like uh, Qigong and Reiki are also energy medicine practices. I learned energy medicine with Donna Eden, who created Eden Energy Medicine or the Eden Method, and learned about energy in a totally different way than I had ever learned through all my years of studying yoga. And the profound transformations that I experienced in that practice led me to start weaving them into my yoga practice. And I started to notice that the yoga techniques that already promised incredible benefits were more powerful when I added these energy techniques into them. And I started doing that more and more and created energy medicine yoga. And as Lisa said at the beginning, I was teaching at Norwich University at the time, and most of my students were soldiers heading off into um, theaters of war around the world. And I wanted to give them tools that could really transform their lives and keep them grounded in the face of of things that most of us don't even want to think about. And so I started bringing these practices forward to them in our classes and they had incredible experiences and transformation and their relationships improved, their study habits, they were able to sleep better, they were able to achieve special ops if they were going out for special ops. And more importantly, they were able to stay centered in the light of often abusive situations. and. I knew at that point that that was something really valuable, that this energy medicine yoga that I was just sort of playing around with was something real and that needed to be codified and brought together and brought forward. And so that's what I did. And with the blessing of Donna Eden and um, weaving her work all through the yoga practices created energy medicine yoga. And in this particular course, we are taking, so there are nine energy systems in the body and we're taking one of them. And it's um, a system from ancient Chinese medicine called the extraordinary vessels or the strange flows. And Donna called them and calls them the radiant circuits because she sees these energies literally bringing radiance and joy and healing to the energy fields, to all of the energy systems and to your body and to your life. And so that's sort of a, a short answer of where energy medicine yoga came from. All right, thank you for that. Um, so this is your second course with the Shift Network. Uh, so Darcy is wondering, how is this course different from the first one? Uh, I really enjoyed that one, but is this similar or completely new material? Hi, Darcy. Welcome back. It is completely new material, everything. So in a yoga practice, there's a, a, always a through line of repetition. It's like any practice. If you play piano, you always play the scales every single day over and over again. And the same thing with yoga and energy medicine yoga. There are threads that are repetitive, just like we did the wake up this morning. You will always do the wake up. So there are certain things that will always be the same, but within that, 
just like, again, with the piano, I keep pointing because I'm, I'm sitting right next to my piano. Within that, you have the variations of and endless variations, just like you have, you know, um, Bach and Beethoven, and then you've got Billy Joel and um, and Billy Eilish, right? So, so you have endless variations. So the first course was focused on healing your trauma and really understanding how trauma works and sits in the body and in, in the energy fields and how we can release that and be free of that. And so when we were contemplating what this next course should be, it became very clear to me that, well, what is the next step? So you release yourself from trauma and you're free. And then what? The next step for me personally on my journey was moving into what I call a field of magic and a field of joy. And so once we've released our trauma and we're free and we understand how to work with difficult and challenging and stressful energies, we want to go beyond that and beyond that is how do you um, enjoy your life every moment of your life even the challenging moments but life is also like a practice life is a practice right every day we do the same things over and over again and so how can we find the joy within that and not only the peak moments of joy but just that um, that contentment that makes your life feel good at the end of each day instead of like a struggle when you're going through those repetitious, potentially monotonous things that you have to do every day, the dishes, the laundry, driving people here, driving people there, making dinner, all of that stuff that you do every single day. If you can't find a place of contentment and joy within that, then, you're, then your life starts to be really difficult and challenging and, and, and has a lack of meaning in it as well. And so I really wanted to share with you all practices for repatterning the body for joy. And as I said, those, those energies that Donna calls radiant circuits are repatternable. So they follow particular patterns in the body and they also jump off of those patterns and go wherever they're needed. And so once we learn to dialogue with them and work with them, we can also create a pattern of joy in our own lives so that we can, it's, to, it's not only that we can serve better and shine our light better and more profoundly, which is also what we can do, but that we feel content, that we feel purposeful, that we feel um, that we are needed on this planet and that we have uh, an intrinsic joy to being here in this body, on this planet at this particular time. So, um, so that's why I created the course and it's completely, completely different from course one. All right, that's good to know, thank you. Uh, this next, it's a vast grouping of the same questions. So many people are asking this. Uh, is it necessary to do floor work? Uh, Marcia says, I can kind of get down, but getting up again is really hard. And then uh, will the practices be accessible to beginners with limited strength? So in other words, what kind of physical condition do we need to be in to take this course? That's a really great question. I can't tell you how many times people say to me, I can't do yoga, I'm not flexible. And that's completely the opposite. That's why you might want to be doing yoga so that you can increase your flexibility and you can increase your strength. And so a similarity to the first course is that I will always give you variations and options for things that you may not be able to do um, one way. So you, you'll need to do them another way. You can do the entire practice in a chair. And as well, one of the things that's really powerful about energy medicine yoga is that you can use the powers of visualization to move energy if you can't physically do some of the movements or poses that we do. So I've had students in wheelchairs that uh, that have literally have no access to particular parts of their body and still have really powerful effects. So using that power of visualization will help you as well. And I think what you'll realize is uh, as you go through the weeks that your capacity will increase. I have crafted these classes to be very accessible. So 
I'm not the one arm flying side crow yogi. I don't do that kind of work in my own physical yoga practice. And I don't teach that kind of yoga for me the yoga and which is why it's energy medicine yoga is it's medicine it's healing and it's completely accessible if you are a beginner this is a beautiful place to start and if you are a seasoned practitioner if you do one arm flying side crow and you're like oh then i don't want to do this it's not going to be challenging for me I, I challenge you to step up as well because what you'll find is when you work with your energy everything gets better. And so if you do a really strong physical practice, that will become easier and more strong for you. And if you've never done yoga before, then EM yoga is a great way to dive in because it's very accessible and very gentle. And I'll talk you through everything. And you're there live with me the whole class and we've got a Q&A every week. And so if there's a pose that I didn't adequately explain or you weren't able to do and couldn't find a, a, a modification for, then you just type in the question and um, and we'll and we'll get you an answer and we'll get you some support for that. So, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, let's address this question first because other people are asking. This is uh, Felicia who says I didn't take the first course. Would I still benefit from this, or would it be better for me to take the first course first? So that's a great question, Felicia. And um, I would say it's very personal. If you are really struggling with uh, tra trauma or the after effects of a traumatic event, or you've got a lot of stress in your life and you feel like that's the, the most important piece for you right now, then I might go back and take the trauma course first. And um, and, and that's still available. It's available for all time. And you can find it on my website, emyoga.net, and you can go and, and get that course there and, and, and start, again, on your own timing, tracking through that course. And if you feel that you're just maybe at a bit of a loss or you're not feeling a lot of joy in your life and you're just kind of humdrum and uh, really wanting something to charge you up and so that you can feel like you're taking control and empowered in your life to make the choices that you want, then you could dive right into the this quantum leap course because it really is taking you to the next level in your life. And so I don't think you have to take one before the other. And we made that choice very um, consciously um, that they weren't pre prerequisites one for the other. So it's really a choice of where you are in your life right now. I think they'll both serve you very well. We'll definitely do some things in this um, joy class to release some difficult emotions, but that's not the focus of this class. So if you're really struggling, like I said, with trauma or with stress and with that kind of patterning, then I might take that course first and then come back and take this course after. All right. Thank you for explaining that. Again, a few people were asking. Um, let's move on to uh, you were talking about the radiant circuits. And Nina says, I'm especially interested in finding my radiant joy circuits as my next step after having cleared much old distress and debris from my childhood, childhood conditioning. How can this course help? This course will do exactly what you said to to give you access and understanding of how to activate each radiant circuit and how to uh, take that even further and really understand what that means to repattern. So we're going to start to look at patterns not only in your life but in nature and then see how the two are interconnected. So if you have some experience of radiant circuits, then this will even deepen that. And if you have no experience with radiant circuits, we're gonna talk you through each, each one, wh where it appears, what it's responsible for doing, how to activate it on a, um, on a basic level, and then how to activate it on an even deeper level. And then you'll start to understand which radiant circuit you might need more than something else and which one you want to go to, which practice is going to serve you better. So I think, um, yeah, th that we're going to give you that holistic view of all of the circuits. And then there are some practices that actually activate all of them at once. And so it's just going to leave you with this deeper understanding of how these patterns work and then how you can start to repattern. And the beautiful thing about patterning 
is they repeat over and over again. And so you always have an opportunity to start again and to build on that and then to get to the level where you want to you want to really bloom out this one thing that you're working on. So then you repattern and repattern and repattern that. It's like knitting a sweater. And it, it, pardon me to you knitters because I'm not a knitter. So if I get something wrong in the knitting metaphor, I apologize. But so you're knitting a sweater and you're following a pattern. But if you go off that pattern, then your sweater is not going to look right or look how you want it to look. So then what you do is you tear out all the threads and then you start again. But once you get to a place where this is how you want the sweater or the scarf or whatever to look, then you keep knitting and you keep knitting and you keep knitting until it's this beautiful creation of yours. And if again, if you have a stitch that you drop in the middle, you seasoned knitters, you know how to pick up a stitch. But if you don't know how to pick that up, you've got to unwind all the knitting and go start again. And so it's a very similar thing in our own lives. If you have patterns that aren't serving you, um, and a lot of the time we call them habits, right? We have habits that aren't serving us, but we are habitual beings. Most of what we do is based on what we've already done before. So if you are re reading a blueprint, which is your unconscious mind, and you're habituating or patterning your life, and it's working and you love the sweater of your life that you're knitting, that's great. Then you probably don't need this course. But if you're knitting along in your life and things aren't working for you, your habits aren't serving you, you keep doing the same thing over and over again and it's it's not working, or you try one thing different but it's still not working because that blueprint underlying, that unconscious driver underlying you isn't giving you the sweater that you want then you need to change that blueprint. And that's what working with the radiant circuits does. It changes the blueprint so that what you come up with at the end, I'm, I'm, I'm holding up the sweater, I'm the sweater, right? That what you come up with is something that you want, something that you appreciate, something that you love, which is you and your life and your actions in your life and the results of your actions in your life. So that's really what, um, what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be rewriting that blueprint. All right. Thank you for your knitting analogy. Uh, those of you who are just joining us, we're here with Lauren Walker, learning about her upcoming course, Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy, which begins Wednesday, June 17th. And you can log on to emyogacourse.com for all the details and to register. So while we're on the topic of radiant circuits, Rick wants to know what's the relationship between radiant circuits and depression? Yeah, that's a great question. So depression is also a habitual pattern in the energy field. It's a habitual downward moving energy. And so um, radiant circuits are often invoked as an antidote for depression. And there are particular radiant circuits that work more strongly with re with no, reversing depression isn't the right way to say it, but with with lifting, with lifting up that energy. And so if depression is something that you struggle with, then absolutely working with the radiant circuits is a beautiful thing to do. And if the depression is coming from um, a longstanding stress or longstanding trauma as well, um, again, referring back to that first course, that the that would be something in the water element and i think that's maybe the second or third module of the first course but that's another way to to work with um uh, transforming that depression into um being able to really release the the energy of that depression and the pattern of that because all diseases whether they're um mental or spiritual or physical all of them are a are stuck energy at the very root level of them. It's energy that's stuck, that's not moving, that's not flowing. And you can feel that when you're depressed, right? It's that you're kind of weighted down and you don't have that um, that illumination, that energy even to get, oftentimes, and I've struggled with this as well, to even get out of bed in the morning. And so to be able to shift that and really lift that energy up so that the energy can flow. And then you can feel sadness and you can feel grief and you can feel suffering, but they come through and you feel them and they continue and move out and they leave you with the information that you need from that experience, but they don't 
sink all of your energy down so that you are then um, depressed and really underwater and unable to move forward into your life. So um, the radiant circuits is a great way to uh, to address depression for sure. Mm. All right. Thank you for addressing that. Uh, let's move into some other uh, conditions, situations that people are curious about. Uh, for example, Venka says, I'm overweight and struggling to lose it, but it feels like my body needs more energy from the inside to do so. I, I'm feeling really, really heavy, like my whole body is surrounded by sandbags. I know my hip area is not in alignment. It's slightly twisted. Also, my neck. Uh, will the course be able to help me? shift my life energy? That's a great question. Um, it's interesting because just this morning I was thinking, what would I do for another course if I were to, to lead another course? And it's interesting because my thought was about um, transformative practices and, and manifestation. So some of the things that you're talking about is are things that I would address there. But absolutely. Um, so the the, the weightedness and not the physical weight, but what you're talking about, the, the emotional and the energetic weight is something that absolutely can be shifted with this repatterning with these radiant circuits. So I want to say this again, radiant circuits are the energies of joy the energies of joy. So when you turn on that favorite song of yours that makes you want to dance around the living room or your puppy comes running across the room with his toy in his mouth, like, play with me, play with me, and you just go all happy and joyful, right? That is the energy of Radiant Circuits. And that is the energy that's available and accessible to us all the time. And those are the energies that help feed all of the other energies that may not be working well. So the radiant circuit energies actually speak to all of the other energy systems in the body. And so if you're feeling that kind of lack of internal energy, then we will only be working with the radiant circuits because so we will be working with all of these other systems to get them activated and firing and even just the wake up that we did right now if you start to do that every day you are going to start to notice incredible changes in just your baseline energy of like how you feel in the morning when you wake up and then including this course with these this radiant circuit energies they are the ones that help you evolve they are the ones that help you evolve. So some of the energy systems like the meridians, right, which many of you know if you've had acupuncture, the meridians run the same pattern in every single body. They go from the outside of the big toe, up the inside of the leg, up to the armpit and pass down, and that's the spleen meridian. And the spleen meridian is the same path in every body. And they've been the same forever. But the radiant circuits are about evolving evolving your energy, evolving your um, your patterns, your habits. And we talked a lot about habits in the first course because, of course, trauma can sit and fix in the body's energy systems as a habit, and that can be intransigent. And so we used a lot of techniques in, in the first course to kind of move and release those habits. The radiant circuits are another way to get in and repattern your habits. So a few people in the course last time said, you know, this course has been wonderful, but I still feeling like I'm having this habit of this or that or this or that. And the radiant circuits would be the next step to start to work with to really understand from the internal how to repattern the body. So I think that this course would really help you and of course, and, and Lisa will say this as well, you have a chance to try it out. And if you don't like it, then you can, um, then you can uh, go and you can get all your money back. So I really believe so strongly in this work that I encourage you to check it out. And then if you don't like it, um, then uncheck it. And, and then and send me an email and tell me what's working for you and what isn't. And, uh, and we'll try to help you out more individually that way. <laughs> all right, thank you for that. Um, while we're talking about specific conditions, uh, Jamila is wondering uh, what exercises will be healing for hormonal balance in postmenopausal women. Week one, week one, the radiant circuit is the most effective for working with uh, with hormonal um, 
bringing bringing your hormones back into balance. And um, there will be another practice as well in week eight that will also be working very directly with, with your hormones. Because, of course, hormones are about longevity and about having that infinity feeling in your life, in your body, in your mind, in your soul. And so we'll work with that all the way through. But the radiant circuits uh, are, are really good for helping to rebalance and bring into balance your hormones. All right, then let's move on to the next uh, condition question. Uh, Trudy wants to know, um, can working with radiant circuits help with anxiety, self-confidence? Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to talk a little bit about anxiety because, again, we do we have a really strong module on that in the first course in the fire element section because anxiety is a fire element issue. So you think about fire and maybe wildfires running out of control and that's the feeling of anxiety, right? There's too much to do, there's not enough time, you don't know what to do and you kind of go, ah, it's everything, everything, everything all at once. And so there's a whole practice that's about um, bringing that anxiety down and, and allowing that fire element to be really, um, uh, kind of like the fire in the belly, right? That's where we want the fire to be instead of burning all around us and making us go kind of crazy with it. So if anxiety feels like that's more um, up for you right now and that that's more potent, then I might again go and take that the trauma class and really work focusing on that anxiety. The self-confidence piece I feel like this course might serve that a little bit more because, of course, if you think about it, the people that you look to that are the most confident, they are grounded, they're centered, and even if they're not exuding joy, there is a contentment and a joyfulness that you read from them because if you're confident, you have this understanding or this feeling that the world supports you. I really believe that that's where our sense of confidence comes from. And of course, that's built in from a young age. If you were, uh, if you were given that guidance from, you, you know, your carers and your support system that, that you were important and that, um, that you were supported, that can come forward into your life. But even if you weren't supported as a young person, you can find that confidence within. So I think that the, the radiant circuits help to bring that forward because once you have the confidence that you can heal yourself and the understanding of how your own energy works, then you start to radiate that because you know what to do when something goes off in your life instead of, I think a lack of confidence comes from, you know, nothing's working, nothing's right, nothing that I do makes any difference, uh, I'm not good enough, all of those kind of things. But once you start to master your energy, then you've got this like secret tool in your pocket that gives you that sense of confidence because you know what to do. You know the tools to turn to and you know that if you don't have the tools, there's references to turn to and you know where to find those. So I think that really breeds confidence as well. So, you know, I think it would be a real toss up on which course to take. And I mean, ideally, of course, you would take both of them. So you would release your trauma and you would move into joy and you would have all of these tools together. So, um, you know, maybe if you're on the fence, go back and look at the at the modules on the trauma course and see what speaks to you more. And, you know, one of the things that we're going to learn in this course very early on is actually how to make those decisions. If you don't have a real grounding in your um, in your intuition, if you don't trust your intuition or you don't think you have an intuition or you don't even know what it is or you've got so many voices in your head, which one's the intuition and which one is your, your mother telling you to clean up your room, then um, we're going to share practice to help you really tune in and and learn how to ask your intuition a question and trust and receive that answer. And um, so that will be a way that you can decide, you know, which which class should I take? Um, which practice should I do? Which food should I eat today? Which outfit should I wear today? All of those kind of things. Um, so 
so I would say if you don't have that tool yet, that um, to really just kind of make a make a list, maybe to, you know, a pros and cons list of each course and just see. And, and that's the start, really. Just look at those and see which are you drawn to, which one, which are you drawn to? I mean, healing trauma is very potent. And so many people struggle and suffer from trauma that there's a huge move towards wanting to heal that. And then moving into joy, I mean, who doesn't want that? It's just, it's joyful even to talk about it. And so really sitting with which one feels the most essential to you right at this moment. Hmm. All right. Thank you. That was very helpful. Um, Looking at the clock here, we have time for a few more questions. But before we get back into those, I'll go ahead and uh, offer a few details about the course itself. People are asking about that. So... I'll go ahead and answer those. Uh, once again, the name of the course is Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy. And this is going to be really just a, a fun and fascinating 10-week uh, journey uh, with Lauren under her expert guidance where you'll experience trans transformative practices to activate your radiant circuits, uh, your energy system for joy and healing. So you can walk the sacred path of contentment, joy, and oneness. And the 10 week course takes place on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, beginning Wednesday, June 17th. And this is a big question. A lot of people ask, what if I can't be there live? That's fine. You won't miss the teachings. You will receive audio and video recordings, transcripts, uh, all course handouts on your course homepage, and you'll be able to keep them forever. <laughs> There's not a time limit on that. You can download them to your computer, to your device, uh, all that good stuff. Also, I'd like to remind everyone that the Shift Network offers a no-risk money-back guarantee on our courses, giving you a full two weeks until July 1st, in this case, to make sure that it's a good fit. We want you to be happy. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can connect with one another. Also, everyone who registers receives the Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy bonus collection. First, you'll receive a video dialogue with Lauren and Nassim Haramine entitled, You Are Quantum. What does that mean and how does it work? Then you'll get a video dialogue with Lauren and Dr. Heather Tallman Room called A Personal, Holistic and Sustainable Approach to Medicine. Befriend your body to create positive synergy. You'll also receive a video dialogue with Lauren and Madison King entitled Self Energy Testing. Welcome to Self Empowerment. Plus, you'll get a practice video and PDF guide from Lauren called The Five Element Flow. And when you register by midnight Pacific on Saturday, June 13th, you'll receive this extra gift. And that is a video dialogue with Lauren and Merlin Sheldrake called Changing Our Awareness of Who We Are. So before we get back into questions, let me ask you, Lauren, what are you most looking forward to sharing in your upcoming course? Well, I'm so glad that you mentioned these bonuses. So um, the conversation with Merlin um, is about fungi. So his book just came out and it is incredible. And it really opens your mind to how we are all interconnected and explores the natural world and the the human world and how we evolved hand in hand with these mycelium, these tiny little uh, ecosystem that is actually one of the biggest um, biological systems on the planet. He's brilliant and funny, and he actually is a radiant circuit. He is literally the definition of a radiant circuit. So if you're thinking about this class, but you're not sure, but you kind of want to do it, but maybe you'll wait to the last minute, you should jump in because you will get that com conversation. And it was so fun. I didn't want to end it. So I'm super excited about that. I'm super, all of the bonuses are incredible. It's one of my most fun parts of doing these courses. The conversation with Nassim is mind boggling. He is one of the most important spiritual teachers on the planet right now. 
And um, to be able to ask him these questions and to hear his wisdom is is literally transformative. It's so powerful and so grounded and really uh, opening up the science of how we are all connected and how meaningful that is and why that's important. A lot of people say, well, I believe we're all connected anyway, so what difference does the science make? This conversation will change your mind about the importance of understanding why the science is so important and how that is going to help change the world. Madison King is the the guru of energy testing. So when I said a little bit ago, learning how to trust your intuition, that energy testing is the bridge. And I'm so excited that she uh, is able to share that with us. And then Heather is a dear friend and always wonderful to talk to about understanding, again, the connection between um, a, a more traditional uh, Western medicine approach and this energy medicine approach and how they're complementary and how they speak to the healing in the body as well. So I'm really excited about uh, about the bonuses. The whole course, I've just been um, just a buzz with it since I started creating it. So I'm not sure I could pick out one particular thing that I'm more excited about than the other because every week is just chock full of incredible experiences and practices and lectures. And I have been upping my game and my knowledge base as I've been preparing this course for you. And I think it's really going to, I know it's gonna be transformative. I've been transformed just creating it and a lot of these practices I've been doing for years, but when you take that to the next step and kind of weave them together in a very specific guided way, it opens up new things. And so I'm just excited for the whole thing. All right, that does sound like a lot of, uh, really a lot of great new material. I'm looking forward to it myself. Um, now, I know earlier we did discuss uh, the physical condition of people, but we are also getting a lot of people asking about uh, age, uh, senior citizens. You know, there's a whole new world of situations going on when you get older. Um, how will this, will they be able to participate? How can it help? Let's talk about age. Yeah, that's a great question. So energy doesn't age. Energy doesn't age. And I did a course with Donna Eden um, a couple of years ago, and she said, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. She said, I'm 75, and I am happier and healthier and stronger than I have ever been. And she just wanted everyone to know that aging is something to look forward to and to grow into and to enjoy and experience. And I know we live in a culture that doesn't venerate the elders the way they should be, the, the wisdom um, that is intrinsic with having lived so long. And I, I think it's really important to acknowledge that, that, that maybe you are starting to notice limitations or uh, or difficulties in the physical body but you know my mom who's a little bit younger than Donna she says gosh you know I look in the mirror and I see this woman and I think who is that woman because inside I feel like I'm 25 years old still right so that's the the truth of energy not aging and so the practices are going to be available and accessible to you you can do everything in the chair you can do it sitting on the edge of the bed if you can like i said earlier if you're in a wheelchair you can't move at all you can still do these practices so don't let those um, cultural portals which limit what you can do don't let them limit you because you have the full capacity available to you so i encourage you to to jump to jump in um, uh, one of our master teachers, I think she just turned 83, 82 or 83, and she is so excited for this next chapter of her life to begin teaching energy medicine yoga. So this is a practice that can serve you your whole life. And I think even more as we age, it's more important that we work with our energies because our energies, although they never age, if we don't utilize them and encourage them into the habits that they are serving us best at, they, like water, find the lowest level and they will kind of be in this, uh, in 
positions where they're not serving you. So again, I'm going back to the wake up that we did at the very beginning of class. We did that crossover pattern. Remember that? So we started same side, same side, and then we crossed over. That is the most important movement of energy in the body after moving forward, which we did with this thump, right? So if your energy isn't crossing over, you're working at a 50% deficit. 50% of your capacity. And as we age, if we haven't trained our energies to cross over and to stay crossing over, then they uncross and we start to feel, we start to feel tired, we start to feel sick and we can't get well. We start to have injuries that don't heal. The root cause of every dis-ease pattern in the body is energy not moving forward and not crossing over. And so it's so important to get these patterns happening and to get them um, to remember how to do that and to do that with consistency, with practice, day after day, week after week. Joy is a practice. It's a practice. There are uh, studies that show if you smile, even if you're not happy, everybody right now, wherever you are, smile right now. Just fake it. That actually changes your neural pathways and creates endorphins in the body, a fake smile. So we need to learn how to start to repattern our energy so that we can really feel the joy. And that's one way to start to do it. It's like fake it till you make it. That's actually true. Start to pretend that you could feel joy and then you will start to feel joy. And I'm going to give you all kinds of other techniques to come in to feel joy as well. But it's really, really important to do at any age. And if you're older, grab your grandchild and do it together with them. Little kids, they are radiant circuit energies. Animals, I do energy medicine yoga with my dog all the time. As a matter of fact, some of you will probably see him in this course because he's a free ranger. So he comes around all the time. Bring more joy into your life by bringing more joy into your life. I know I went off on a lot of different tangents, but that's my answer. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Um, we got a question here from Gail, who is a, just a practical question. What kind of supplies do we need? Do we need a yoga mat? What do we bring to the classes? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. Um, and before the, cl uh, the course starts, you'll get a little sheet of things to bring. But um, you'll want a yoga mat, a yoga block, and a yoga blanket. And like I said, if you prefer to do the whole course in a chair, you can do that as well. And we'll give you modifications along the way. I suggest that you um, get a copy of my first book, but it is not required. Um, but there will be things that I'll reference back and forth. And if you have a copy of that, then you can kind of um, look them up and we'll give you in the homework kind of pages to reference for that. But again, that's not a requirement. And um, a stick. I'll talk more about that in the first week, but we're going to do a little art project together over here as well. So, um, uh, but I'm going to give you that when, when you get your little list of things. So that'll be an easy one. The main things are a yoga blanket block and a yoga mat and a journal. Thank you. A journal. Always want to have a journal. I have mine right here that I got specially for the trauma class and now it's continuing and it's going to be my journal for the joy course. So have a journal. All right, great. Thank you for that. That was very helpful. A little supply list. Um, you know what? We, we've only got a couple minutes left, but let's do this. Marissa is wondering, what's the best way to energize our bodies? I wonder if you can just share just a quick little practice. Just something mm -hmm. sitting in your chair. Scroll back to the very beginning of this and do the wake up. That is the best way to get your energy going. And so if you just need a little, well, let's just do a little mini one and we won't do the whole thing, but just, you can make fists and just thump on your chest all over, just like Tarzan. And that breathing practice is really important. It's not just a inconsequential or a throwaway breathing in the nose and out the mouth. And then take your fingers and tap all over your face and breathe in the nose and out the mouth. And then go down your neck and then just smooth down your neck and out to the side and keep breathing in the nose and out the mouth. Shake off your hands. 
squeeze the top of one shoulder and slice through the body to the opposite hip. Squeeze the other shoulder and slice. Do it again. Squeeze. One more time each side. Shake off your hands. There you go. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, Lauren. Um, I, I, we're about out of time here. I want to thank you for your time. This has been a wonderful uh, conversation. I want to thank our viewers for being with us today and for all of your questions. Uh, once again, Energy Medicine Yoga to Embody Joy begins Wednesday. June 17th. And again, you can visit emyogacourse.com to learn more and to register. So before we cut you loose, Lauren, uh, do you have any final words for our viewers? Whether you take this course or not, I want you to know that you have these energies in you. They're alive and they're available and they're there to support you. It is how you operate. The energy preceded the physical form. And so it's very easy to access. It's not some esoteric thing that you need to study for a million years to understand. Those two little practices that we did today in class, if you just start to do the wake up every day, you will see a massive transformation, a quantum transformation. And we'll unpack what quantum means in the course. But this is your birthright. This is your birthright to be happy, to be joyful, to be purposeful, to be free. So I want you to know that whether you take this course or not, you are a child of the ether, a child of the universe, and we are all interconnected and we are all here to support each other. So if you take this course, we're here to support you. And if you don't, we will still be supporting you through the ether on your journey. And I hope that that is a joyful journey. And I hope that you join us. All right. Thank you again, Laura. It has been such a delight spending time with you today. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. It's been a joy seeing you again, Lisa. And thank you all who joined us. It's always wonderful to hear your questions and to see where this work is seeding and sprouting up all over the place. So thank you. All right. And once again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great day, everyone.